Okay, welcome to Precalculus 4.4a. This is 4.4a. And today we're going to be looking at how we can take the trig function, find a trig function of any angle. And we've looked at a number of different tools that we can use to take some trig functions. And so far, you've used a circle similar to the circle on the right here that had x and y values for each point. Going forward, you're going to be responsible for being able to take a trig function without having a, a reference to look at. So for this lesson, there will be two quizzes, one with the reference and the one that you have to do without any notes at all. It is a closed note quiz. Uh, the first time will be with notes, though, and it's important to have this information in your notes. So you want to have two sections here, your special triangles and your unit circle. I'm going to look at our special triangles first, and you may have seen this in trigonometry or geometry in the past. And this triangle, uh, this first one here, may be familiar as a 30, uh, 60, 90, for the right angle, triangle. And this is a special triangle that we use for a lot of different references, and it has very specific sides that we're going to use, and the short side is always 1. 1. And the long side is square root of 3, radical 3 or root 3. And the hypotenuse is 2. So you may have seen this triangle in the past. You'll need to memorize this triangle. You should just know this one. But something that we're going to add in pre-calculus is labeling this triangle in radians as well. So this larger angle, the 60 degree angle, this is the equivalent of pi over 3 because that's 180 divided by 3 is 60 degrees. And the smaller side is equivalent to pi over 6. 180 is pi divided by 6 leaves 30 degrees. So this is our first special triangle and you need, you'll need to memorize this triangle. Our second special triangle is the 45-45 triangle. And you may have seen this one in geometry. 45 degrees and 45 degrees. This one also has specific side lengths. Uh, the first one on the right here is 1, but the other is also 1. And 1 squared plus 1 squared equals 2, and the square root of 2 is 2, which gives us our third side. This is our 90 degree uh, right angle. And then we're also going to add our pi radians, and that is pi over 4 is the equivalent of 45 degrees. So these two triangles you'll want to memorize. And then we also need to memorize our unit circle. This is a simplified version of the ones we've worked with so far. Uh, these, the unit circle, you can tell what these um, points are. We assume that this radius is a unit of 1, 1, anything, feet, inches, miles, 1 unit. If this length, if the radius of the circle is 1, then the coordinates of this point right here are 1 over 1 up 0. And the coordinates of this point right here is across 0, we didn't go over at all, and up 1. This point here is uh, to the left 1, or negative 1, up 0. And my last one down here is over 0 but down 1, 0, negative 1. And just as a reminder, it's good to have these labeled. We have um, in degrees, this is 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees. And our uh, radian equivalent is uh, 0 radians, pi over 2 radians, pi radians, and 3 pi over 2 radians. The most important thing to have here is the radians. You should be thoroughly familiar with the degrees yourself at this point. Now one more thing, it is helpful to remember here um, that if we recall our fundamental trig identities, y equals cosine theta, x equals sine theta, and y over x equals tangent theta, or we could say tangent equals sine theta over cosine theta. 
So on this circle, we could label these. My x value is cosine, and my y value is sine. And here my x value is cosine, my y value is sine. Here my x value is cosine, and my y value is sine. Here my x value is cosine, and my y value is sine. Having those will make it very quick to reference and catch what was that value. And you should be prepared for any trig problem going forward that you would be able to quickly draw a small version of this, label just the part that you need, and then be able to use the special triangle or the unit circle to solve a problem. If you haven't finished writing these very carefully and clearly in your notes, go ahead and pause the video and write these down now. Okay, so now we're going to see how to take uh, the trig function, how to find the trig function of any given value, how to find its exact value. So whenever it asks for the exact value, you're not going to be able to use your calculator. And a quiz on this, um, you could have your calculator with you. You could use it to help you with some arith arithmetic if you need to, but it's not going to be able to take a trig function for you. Now we're equipped to find the value of a trig function of any angle. And we're going to have a number of steps to this, and tonight's homework, this first video, is going to take us through the first four. Finding the coterminal angle, finding the quadrant, using the quadrant to determine the sign of our answer, and then finding the reference angle. And the first three go really fast, they're pretty straightforward. The last three are where we really get into the trig. That's where we start applying our reference triangles. So tonight you have a chance to start memorizing those reference triangles in the unit circle. And what we're going to do is we'll take the, uh, find the coterminal angle for the first three of these four functions, and then we'll find the quadrant for the first three of these functions, the sine for the first three, and the reference angle for the first three, and then I'll give you a chance to try the fourth on your own. So starting with sine of 580 degrees, we need to find the coterminal angle. Coterminal angle, as a review, is always an angle between 0 and 360 degrees. That ends at the same point, terminates at the same point as our original angle. In radians, this would be between 0 and 2 pi. So with our degrees, we would find this by taking our original angle and either adding or subtracting 360 degrees. In this case, 580 minus 360. And if I get a number that's now below 360, I'm good. If it's still greater than 360, I'll need to subtract 360 again. When I subtract, then, I find that my angle that is coterminal is 220 degrees. That is my coterminal angle. Looking at our second example, negative 135 is less than 0, so I'm going to add 360 degrees. Negative 135 plus 360. My result is 225 degrees. For tangent 11 pi over 4, now I'm going to add or subtract 2 pi. And since this is greater than 360, or greater than 2 pi, or in terms of fourths, I could say greater than 8 pi over 4. That's what 2 pi is in fourths. I'm going to subtract 2 pi, or subtract 8 pi over 4. So I have 11 pi over 4 minus 8 pi over 4 equals 3 pi over 4. And that is now less than 2 pi, or less than 8 pi over 4. So my coterminal angle is 3 pi over 4. Now go ahead and try this last one, cosecant of negative 7 pi over 6. Your first question for the video is what will we do to negative 7 pi over 6 to get a coterminal angle between 0 and 2 pi? And then your second question will be what is that coterminal angle? Okay, so now that you've completed that fourth example, let's look at the second step, which is the quadrant. In order to determine the quadrant, I need to actually draw this angle. And it's useful to remember the four parts of our, of our coordinate plane here. Uh, we start at 0. This is 90 degrees here, 180 here, 270 here, 
and 360 is at the same t place. 360 is coterminal with 0. So I have 220 degrees. I always start here on the positive x-axis. And I'm going to go around until I have reached 220, which is going to be some place between a value below and above it. And we'll kind of see here 220 is more than 0. It's also more than 90, so I go past 90. It's also more than 180, so I go past 180. But 220 is not more than 270, so I'm going to stop someplace in this quadrant. I don't need to know exactly where in this quadrant. I just know that it's somewhere in this quadrant. And this is my first. I start at the positive going up, and I count in the same order. I would draw my angles. Quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. And the one new thing that we need to add here is we've looked at these quadrants in terms of numbers, but each of these quadrants also tell me which trig functions are positive in those quadrants. So our first quadrant is our all quadrant, and that means all trig functions are positive here. My second quadrant is my sine quadrant. So sine and its reciprocal cosecant are positive in the second quadrant. My third quadrant is my tangent quadrant. Tangent and its reciprocal cotangent are positive in the third quadrant. And my fourth quadrant is my cosine quadrant. So cosine and its reciprocal secant are positive in the cosine quadrant. And many a calculus class for many a year have kept track of these with the following acronym, all students take calculus. Whether it's true or not, that's how we remember it. Everyone in this class, anyway, is going to take calculus at some point, I trust. So all students take calculus. My angle ended in the third quadrant. That is the tangent quadrant. So I'm going to write that tangent and cotangent will be positive. That's the quadrant that I'm in. It's my tangent cotangent quadrant. Let's look at cosine of negative 135. So here I have 225 degrees. This will be very similar. 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. And I start drawing my angle. 220 is more than 0, more than 90, more than 180, but not more than 270. So I'm going to stop in this quadrant. This is my all students take. So this is my tangent and cotangent quadrant. These are the two trig functions that will be positive in this quadrant. Looking at our third example, I have 11 pi over 4. So I'm going to draw my quadrant now. When I'm dealing with uh, radians, this one's a little bit trickier because it's not easy 0, 90, and so forth. But let's label these in radians. This is 0 pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2. But it's a little bit tricky to say, well, where is 3 fourths pi in this? So if we wanted, we could rewrite these as pi over 4, since I'm dealing with fourths. That's one way I could do this. I'll clear the space up a little bit. So pi over 2 and fourths, I'd multiply the top and bottom by 4. So this is 2 pi over 4. And pi in fourths would be 4 pi over 4. And 3 pi over 2 in fourths, I'd multiply top and bottom by 2. That would be 6 pi over 4. So it would now be pretty easy to see where would 3 pi over 4 lie. Well, 0, 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, less than 4 pi over 4, but more than 2 pi over 4. So this angle would lie here. And this is in my all students. This is my sine and cosecant quadrant. Go ahead and try this fourth one at negative 7 pi over 6. Find which quadrant does this lie in and which trig functions are going to be positive in that quadrant. Those are your, that is your next question down below. Okay, more than halfway done. Number three is super easy. Number three is what will the sign of my answer be, positive or negative? And the way we tell is based on our quadrant here and the trig function we're taking. So if 
tangent and cotangent are going to be positive in this quadrant, then if I were finding the tangent of 580, it would be positive. But I'm finding the sine of 580. Sine does not match tangent or cotangent. It's not one of these two. Because it's not, that means my answer must be negative. Only tangent and cotangent are positive in this quadrant, so sine, not being tangent or cotangent, must be negative. And I'm just going to put a little negative sign there. For cosine negative 135, again, my quadrant, tangent and cotangent are positive. But I'm finding cosine. Cosine is not positive, therefore my sine must be negative. For my third one, sine and cosecant are positive in my second quadrant. I'm finally finding tangent, but not in the tangent quadrant. Since tangent is not sine or cosecant, and only sine and cosecant are positive, then tangent must be negative. Go ahead and try this last example. Find the sine. Does, do the trig functions in my quadrant that are positive match the trig function I'm actually trying to find. If I'm trying to find a function that is positive in that quadrant, then my sine will be positive. But if I'm trying to find a trig function that's not positive in this quadrant, then my sine will be negative. Go ahead and fill that out below and then continue. Okay, the home stretch, we're finding reference angles. And so far, really, um, everything has been easier in degrees and a little bit trickier in radians. Degrees, we're dealing with these nice numbers, no fractions. Um, but in our radians, we're dealing with fractions a little, little bit more difficult. This is the one place where radians is actually easier and degrees can be a little bit trickier. And to do this, we want to kind of redraw our angle and see that when we drew this angle, we drew it down into that third quadrant. To find the reference angle, we're going to ask how many degrees, how many degrees to ease. to the x-axis. How many degrees to the x-axis? So if I drew an angle that landed in this quadrant or this quadrant, I would want to find what is the difference between that angle and the x-axis, which is 180 degrees right there. So in this case, I have 220. This is 220 right here. This is 180. When I say what is the difference between these two, that would be subtraction. I do 220 minus 180, and in this case, I would get 40 degrees. So 40 degrees would be my reference angle. If, just to look at some other possibilities, if I had drawn an angle into this quadrant, and let's say that angle was uh, 150 degrees. Then I would be looking for the difference between 150 and 180. In that case, it would be 180 minus 150. And that difference would be 30 degrees. Let's look at two more cases real quick before we move on. What if I had an angle in the first quadrant? Let's say 60 degrees. Well now I'm not going to 180. 180 is over here. Now I'm going over here and over here is 0 or 360. And obviously um, if I'm going down to the x-axis I'm going down to 0 where I started. The difference between 0 and 60 is 60. What if I drew an angle all the way around to here or maybe a negative angle. I came down here and let's call this um, what if this angle were 300 degrees? Well, again, I'm going to go up to the x-axis right here. I'm not going to cross. I never cross the, the up and down line, the y-axis. I was going to go up to the x-axis, the closest one. So now I'm going up to 360. So I would say, what is 360 minus 300? And I would get a reference angle of 60 degrees. So those are a few different examples. Let's go ahead and look at our cosine negative 135. So in this case, I draw my angle again. 
Similarly, I uh, 225, I go all the way around, and I'm in here somewhere is 225. So when going to the x-axis, I'm going to go up here to 180. The difference between 225 and 180 is 45 degrees. So my reference angle is 45 degrees. The whole point of this reference angle is this will always give us something, with these types of problems, this will always give us something we can find on our unit circle or on our special triangles. Let's look at radians. So radians, technically we could do the same way. We could draw the angle. This one is 3 pi over 4. That would be 1, 2, 3 pi over 4. Here's my 3 pi over 4 angle. And I would go down to the x-axis, which is pi, or 4 pi over 4, and I could subtract. 4 pi over 4 minus 3 pi over 4 equals pi. But what we find, this was actually a previous student from one of my uh, second or third pre-calculus classes, noticed a shortcut. She noticed that just for these special triangles, just for our pi over 4, pi over 6, and pi over 3, we would always get the same denominator in the bottom and just pi on top. And so we call this the Owens theorem. The Owens theorem, because Shanice Owens, a graduate of I think 2010, maybe, noticed this pattern, and we've been able to use this every year since then. So Owens theorem says I can look at the denominator and put pi over it, and that's going to give me re my reference angle. Now note that Owens theorem only works for multiples of pi over four, multiples of pi over six and multiples of pi over 3. This doesn't work necessarily for pi over 7 or pi over 9 or pi over 8. But it does work for my pi over 4, pi over 6, and pi over 3, which are the ones that we're going to use our special triangles for. So you can use this shortcut now for cosecant negative 7 pi over 6 and determine what would the reference angle be here. What we'll do tomorrow is look at how do we select our reference triangle, what is our trig relationship. That will give us our answer, which we can simplify and rationalize as needed and include our sign from here. And that will be tomorrow. Additionally, we'll look at what about angles like pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2. We've dealt with these before, you've seen some in the past, but we're going to refine that and get some additional practice on it as well.